Hi, this is Kelly Hewitt. This is our beginner Bible study week 11. So we're moving right along with our information. Last week we talked about the old law and I wanted to share a story with you that I thought was so cute um, from my past. I was talking one day of, uh, to a little girl who's about four years old about the birth of her baby sister. And this little girl had the most adorable little, um, uh, like maybe Southern accent. She was maybe from Texas or Alabama or something cute like that. And this little girl, um, I was asking her about the new baby at their house and she was telling me all about the new baby. And then, uh, she began to tell me a few things about the old baby. And I'm thinking the old baby. And then I remembered that she has two younger siblings. And so for her, the, the uh, older of the younger siblings had been the baby until the new baby came. So it was just logical for her to say, well, the old baby and the new baby, which I thought was so cute. It's such a cute memory. But I thought it was interesting in light of what we're looking at this week and last week in our studies where we're looking at the old law and the new law, kind of the old baby and the new baby. Um, that's kind of a funny story that made me think of that. Um, the old law, we call it the old law because the new law has come in, the law of Christ has come in and replaced that law. And so I think last week, I hope we did a decent job kind of outlining um, the old law, what it was, who it was for, and how um, Jesus is come to do away with that law, to abolish it. He did, He said, I didn't come to abolish it, but I came to fulfill it. So Jesus isn't going to obliterate the law, but to fulfill it. And we're like, well, what does that mean? What's, what's this new law that we're supposed to follow? We talked last week about how the old law was a shadow and Christ is the substance. And you'll find that in Hebrews 10, 1. Um, Imagine this idea that at the time that the law was given to Moses, to his people, they have um, the Ten Commandments and the Torah. Um, by the time that, at the time that was given, imagine this, Jesus is standing in the future. The light of God is shining on Christ, but we haven't got there yet as far as history goes. And so the light of God is shining on Christ and what we see is a shadow. And that shadow looks like the law. It has um, a, a shadowy substance that kind of gives us an idea of what Christ is going to be like, but it is not in fact Jesus, okay? And then we fast forward through history to when Jesus actually comes to earth and actually begins his ministry, um, dies on the cross for us and is raised into newness of life. Um, then, it is no longer us looking at God's light through to the shadow of Jesus, but we can actually see the substance of Christ. And I want you to think about that in light of the old covenant, meaning the promise, and the new covenant, meaning another promise, and how those correlate together. I think it's really important and interesting to understand that God doesn't throw things away. He doesn't make things um, that are garbage. He doesn't, he didn't make the old law and say, yeah, that didn't work very well. Let's scrap it and go with Jesus. No, he had a purpose and a place for everything. And uh, we're going to continue to pull out some truth from scripture that helps us understand the correlation between the old law of the Jews and the new law of Christ. So, if you think about it, the old law was restrictive. It was complicated and difficult to follow, especially when people began to add things to it, as you can find uh, from lots of history. Throughout time, people added things to it to be sure that people weren't breaking the law. They would add additional things that you needed to do. Uh, there was rules about which kind of cloth you could wear. You could not wear cloth that was two kinds of fabric, so you couldn't mix wool and linen together and wear that. Um, there was laws about what kind of meat you could eat. There was laws about when someone died or someone was sick, how you could treat them or touch them, when you could go to the temple, when you could not. Um, all of those laws were very specific and those are found in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. 
numbers, um, those areas of the Bible that kind of outline the law. And um, those were very difficult to follow. However, not impossible. God will never set a bar so high that we cannot reach it. Um, he will never ask his people to do the thing that's impossible. And so the law was not impossible to follow. We find that, you remember the story of Zechariah from Matthew? Well, him and his wife had kept the law perfectly. Um, they had kept the law um, up until that point um, according to the way that God wanted them to. So it's it's not an impossible law, but it was a hard one. Um now, going back to the idea that Jesus came to fulfill. Now, I kind of tripped over my words and said abolish. Now, Jesus said, I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill, okay? So let's look closer at what that means. Um, I was reading a book, um, let's see, by, uh, I don't know what happened to the book, by Jim Fawn, and um, it's Why Did My Savior Come to Earth was his book, and um, I will reference that in the end of this, but he had a, an illustration that I thought worked really well um, when, with us trying to understand um, what does it mean that Jesus did not come to abolish but to fulfill, okay? So um, I want you to imagine that there's, there's two ways to destroy a seed, okay? To abolish a seed, okay? Um, one we could uh, smash it, we could burn it, we could, you know, just completely obliterate the seed, just crush it with a hammer, the seed's gone, it's done, okay? We've fulfilled it, uh, so to speak, okay? So, but then there's another way, and it's the way that I uh, love to imagine that, that the law is, and that the other way to um, kind of redeem a seed or to damage a seed to take away its seedness is to plant it. We put the seed in the soil and we water that soil and we give it light and what happens? The seed ceases to be and a plant grows in its place. So I liked that from Jim Fawn. He is the one that, that gave me that idea and I think that's really beautiful because I really feel like God's law through the law of Moses was like that seed, full of potential. And Jesus didn't come to smash it and say that it was worthless, but he came, he planted that seed with his body in the earth when he died. And when he rose again, he um, fulfilled it. It reached its potential, okay? So that's an interesting way to look at the law. God doesn't make garbage. The law was not purposeless. It was our teacher and our guardian. We learn that in Galatians 3.24, that the law was put into place as our headmaster, our teacher, our guardian um, to teach us. So there's potential there for us to learn something. And in Christ, we reach that potential um, from the law in Christ Jesus. So um, we want to look more at um, when Jesus came to fulfill the law, what does that actually mean? Um, do we have proof that Jesus came to put away the old law and install the new one? Um, this can be a complicated topic, and I just have a couple of verses today that I want us to look at. So every time that um, those Jewish people who were born under law as an Israelite um, every time they broke one law, they broke the whole law. We have that um, from scripture. Um, when you break one part of the law, I think it's in James. When you break one part of the law, you break the whole law. So that began to build up a debt, um, so to speak, right? When you don't do something you're supposed to do, you build up debt. And so whenever um, people would break the law, they were building up debt. And then the way that that was solved was the, the forgiveness of, uh, or the offering of sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins. And we learned from Romans that bulls, blood, the blood of bulls and golds cannot take away the sin. Um, we learned that that's not sufficient. And yet that was the law. And so they were always dealing with, um, a, a debt, 
that they owed because they followed the law. Um, so in uh, Colossians 2.14, it says, this is this about Jesus, okay? Having canceled the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us. That's all the things that happen when we try to follow the law, which was hostile to us, okay? It was hard to follow. It says, he has taken it out of the way, nailed it to the cross. So Jesus has taken all that debt that we incur by trying to be law followers, by trying to be good enough to earn it, and he's nailed that to the cross. Now, I just want to prove to you um, a couple of verses that you may not have looked at before that talk about how the law was done away with and that Christ has established a new law, that new plant, that substance versus the shadow. Look in John chapter 1, verse 17. That one says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. So we have that comparison, the old law through Moses, grace and truth through Jesus Christ. So let's establish the new law, that new law of grace and truth with some other verses that help us understand the correlation between those two. Let's look at Galatians chapter six, verse two. This one specifically says the law of Christ. One of the verses in the Bible that specifically uses law of Christ, it says, bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. So there we're finding that the law of Christ, if it can be summed up in bear one another's burdens, we're talking about something that is a lot lighter, a lot easier to follow than the big Torah and the, um, and the Ten Commandments. Now, Paul talks to the Corinthians about this. Now, Paul is speaking, and we had the law. There, there was two kinds of people, right, um, at the time of Jesus. There were Jews that were born under the law, that followed the law. They were given the law to follow, just the Jews. And then we have everybody else. Those are the two kinds of people that um, would have heard the gospel. That's the two kinds of people we have today. Jewish people and everybody else. Okay, so Paul, if you don't know a lot about the Apostle Paul, Paul calls himself a Jew of Jews. Okay, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, which means that he had studied the law. He was able to teach at a high level, was respected, had earned um, those recognitions by the Jewish people. He was able to um, teach the law to others. And yet, um, Christ comes and just totally breaks down that barrier. And you see that in 1 Corinthians 9.21. Paul is speaking. And what does he say? He said, to those of you who are without law, that's the everybody else in the equation, I became as one without law. Though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I may gain those who are without law. So he is kind of showing that we are all Christians are under the law of Christ. That that old law has, has done its part. Thank you. Handshake. You've done your part. Now Jesus is going to establish the law of Christ. So Furthering that information, Romans 10.4. This is a very straightforward verse to me that tells us about the law. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Also, Galatians 3.24. Therefore, the law has become our guardian to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. Again, what was the law for? It was to hold the place until Jesus could come. It was the shadow from Hebrews 10.1, and Christ is the substance. Romans 6, 14 says, For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. So um, we can understand that we are no longer bound by the laws of the Torah. We are no longer bound by anything except the law of Christ. And Christ it does establish a law for us. But he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, the, the way that I am going to guide you will no longer be 
rules and regulations and boxes that you have to check that feel like a burden. But my law is going to be something that's written in your heart because that's what God wanted all along, isn't it? He wanted our heart. He's going to reiterate that law all throughout the Gospels and throughout the, the inspired writings. And we have this law of Christ. And I really think that there are three words that really sum up the law of Christ for us that we are now under. When we are clothed with Christ, when we are belonging to Christ, we are subject to just the law of Christ. And I think the three words that really embody the law of Jesus for me are um, grace and liberty and truth. So let's look at a couple of verses that talk about those that new law in Christ. Um, if we have the old covenant done away, the new covenant is in place. What does that look like? What is the new covenant? Luke twenty two twenty tells us in the same way, okay, this is something you've probably heard um, in communion services. But listen to what Jesus says as what he came to establish. In the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten and said, this cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. His blood established a new covenant and that's the one that we want to follow. So how do we do it? What are the rules? What are the things that we're beholden to? Um, I really think that liberty and grace and truth are really the words that we're looking for. So I want you to, as homework or just as an exercise, I want to I want you to go to the book of James and I want you to look up two verses, James 1.25 and James 2.12. So look up those two verses and see what you think the law of liberty is. Um, so law of Christ being the law of grace, the law of liberty, and the law of truth. So hopefully that's um, piquing your curiosity a little bit and getting you into the word to find out what that law of Christ really looks like. Um, next week, what I'd like to do is go into a discussion of what liberty means, um, what grace really is, and where we find truth. And hopefully um, you'll have some questions. Um, during our Zoom classes, we have lots of questions about the law, the old law and how they correlate. And um, those are really uh, positive times to communicate. But if you've got a question, feel free to comment below or um, ask me on uh, email and I would be happy to try to answer your question. So uh, hopefully you can understand that that Jesus is like the plant that came from the law that was the seed. He came to fulfill it, to make it perfect. And um, that we are no longer bound by those difficult, burdensome laws, but that we are under a new law in Christ. We're going to talk all about what that new law looks like in the weeks to come. Have a great week.